hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode as you guys all know this is the diaspora transition episode we speak to people who move back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent and today we have someone very special it's called lauren okay without further ado welcome on the show thank you now this lady moved back from holland holland yes. to ghana yes wow before anything why ghana um i always say why not why not I always say why not. Wow. So you one day you were in Holland, it's like, nah, I'm not doing Holland anymore. I'm tired of this paradise. I want to move to Africa. And nowhere in Africa but Ghana. What triggered uh, that for you? It didn't really happen that way. Mm -hmm. It was a very long process. Mm -hmm. I know for a lot of people it seemed very sudden and very much out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to live in Africa. Because oh. I always feel very much connected mm -hmm. with Africa. So I'm originally from Angola. Okay. Um, I grew up in Holland. So my parents are refugees of war, of the oh, civil war in okay. Angola, basically. I I always say um, the European lifestyle just wasn't for me. Okay. I, I always say Europe is not for everyone, mm. but Africa is also not for everyone. Okay. You know, some people move to Asia, some people move to America. Mm -hmm. The one is not better or less than the other. Mm. It's just how what works for you and mm -hmm. what fits with your soul. Okay. I think that's the most important. And for me. I always felt like I wanted to live in Africa. Ever wow. since I was a little kid, I always felt like more connected. And I always felt like, oh, wow. actually, I want to live in Africa. Okay. I always used to say that. Always. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you were saying your parents yes. moved to Holland because of there was war in Angola. Yes, exactly. At what age? Were you born in Angola? Uh, uh, no, I was born in Holland. I think okay. in the uh, early 90s. Like 90s, okay. Three, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So growing up in Holland, you you begin to work you tell you were telling me you were a model for 10 years yeah right more or less. <laughs> right and why did you decide to leave that behind because uh, you had a dream life you were in the paradise i don't think so really i didn't have a dream life and i was also not in paradise i would never call holland paradise but then that's that's definitely not uh, okay um that was not what it was like for me um like i said it's just a life that people create for you mm -hmm. and I was working as a counselor for the educational field in HR. So I, I have my bachelor in HR, I have my own apartment, but mm -hmm. I just wasn't happy. I wow. just felt like you just work every day, nine to five. You don't really have time for yourself. You can never really be your own self. You cannot release your creative side. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a creative. I've wow. always been a writer. I've always been a storyteller. That has always been me. Um, so I felt like that was no space for me. And besides that, I just found Holland very depressing. You know, the, yeah, bed, yeah. the weather, and it's so cold. Everyone is just, you know, doing yeah. their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't fit me anymore. That's wow. I yeah. You decided to move to Ghana. Yeah. You arrived. And then how was the feeling like? Um, when I arrived, I felt great. Great? I felt like when I landed on the airport, I knew I made the right decision. Mm -hmm. I just felt like, okay, let's just see how it's going to go. And mm -hmm. I never expected... To, because I never made a decision to move here. Okay. I just came and never left. That when was the first time you came? How the first time I came was back in 2015. Okay. I came. It was for modeling, but it was a very short, short layover, like maybe two, three days. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh wow, I really see myself um, living here. Mm -hmm. I really feel like okay, this can be for me. So um, it, a lot of people think I just woke up one day and oh, let me move to Africa. No, mm -hmm. that's definitely not how okay. it is. This has always been on my mind. Ever since I was 18, I knew, like, okay, at one point, I'm going to live in Africa. We are Africans. Okay. That's who we are in, in essence. Mm -hmm. And your soul will always find its way home. So we I can see. live everywhere you want, but, you know, your soul will always find its way home. And that's wow. how, how I feel it. And a lot of times people make it seem like outside is always better, but that's not always true. Mm -hmm. It's not always true. We can create our own paradise here. In Africa. There's always also such a thing as the African dream. Wow. We just have to find what it is. Wow. We just have to wow. explore what it is. Now you are in Ghana. How is Ghana treating you? Oh, I think Ghana is great. Ghana. <laughs> yeah, Ghana is nice. It's super chill. Mm -hmm. um, Did it meet your expectations? Um, I didn't have any expectations when I came. Okay. I just came. Let me see. I gave mm -hmm. myself one month. Let me just see. Let me mm -hmm. just try and stay for one month. See, okay. See if I like it. Mm. And, but if I don't like it, I can always go back. Okay. So it was just like, let me just come mm -hmm. for one month. And then two months, and then three months. Oh, okay, let okay. me just see how long okay. I can stay. And you are here almost more than one year now. One and a half year. <laughs> yeah. How has it been like? How is the challenges going? You know, I've seen your production company. You have a yes. production company yes. where you, you do a music video for artists, and yes. then 
you do a lot of things. You, I saw you at the Global Citizen uh, Festival. Yeah. You are doing red carpets. You're doing. You're everywhere, doing great things, right? Thank but you. I don't think you just immediately went just you know from zero to hundred. You've you've been through the. Yeah. How is it like? Yeah. Um, to be honest, obviously it wasn't like easy always, mm. but I don't think it was that hard that I felt like, oh, I can do this. I always felt like, okay, you know, like I can do it. Okay, okay. And I always say like, you should always follow your path and you should always um, follow, you know, where God is leading you. Okay. Um, and sometimes it's not for other people to understand. Mm. Sometimes it's just between you and God and that's it. Okay. And it has to only make sense for yourself. So mm. for me, it was still making sense. Okay. But obviously for a lot of people around me, they're like, okay, what's she doing? <laughs> it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. She's living in her own illusion. Mm -hmm. What the hell? No, no, no. Yeah. But I always knew like, okay, I saw this vision like maybe... So your friends were saying uh, things like uh, that to no, you? No, definitely not. Okay. The people that really, really know me, mm -hmm. they knew that I always wanted to do this and I had this vision in my head I think like maybe three four years ago already okay. so like my sister my brother um, some of my closest friends they were like oh yeah makes sense mm. that you're wow. taking this step right now wow. and um, obviously a lot of people uh, were in doubt but mm -hmm. I was just like mm, okay mm -hmm. you're still gonna do it anyway yeah I was still gonna do it wow. anyway and now they're all coming back oh my god how are you doing this how are you doing that so I feel like definitely the challenges were there, mm -hmm. but I also think um, I come from a hard, from a tough place anyway. Okay. So I didn't grow up in a fairy tale life. I look mm. like nice and fancy now, mm -hmm. but that was not how my life has always been. So I've already been through all of that, um, and besides that, I already had a successful company coming here. Okay. So I was just meeting uh, the demands of my customers mm -hmm. because at that time in Holland most of the Afrobeat artists were telling me oh my god I really want to shoot a music video in Africa, mm -hmm. I really want to film in Ghana and I was hearing that almost at one point at every um, production I was working on. So I was like okay cool, mm -hmm. from then I bring the clients there, they'll be good. Okay. Wow. So a, a lot of people underestimate that I didn't start from zero. Mm. I was already doing this for five years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We have my companies now. That's crazy to say. Yeah. It's five years. Yeah. Wow. And it's an international production company. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's how I how I always envisioned mm -hmm. it. When I started it when I was twenty one. Mm -hmm. It's also crazy to say. I'm like wow, time is really flying. Mm -hmm. And I never in my life thought that I would, I would get this far. Wow. I never thought it was it wow. would be something this big at one point. It is. Yeah. It is huge. So let's let's talk. There's challenges. I know it's it's not been easy. We want to let people watching right now know that this is what you have to expect when you get to Ghana. It's not sun signs and no. rainbows all the time. No. What has been some I challenges? I always say uh, Ghana is every day different. Wahala. <laughs> always say every day different. You can wahala. literally wake up and you don't know what's going to happen that day. Mm -hmm. That's Ghana for you. You have wow. to. Go. I remember when I came. Mm -hmm. You just have to be ready all the time. You have to be dressed up and ready. Mm. You can just be sitting here. Someone comes. Oh, there's a party with this, this, and that. Oh, someone needs a production. Someone mm -hmm. needs this. You have to be ready. Mm -hmm. You cannot be going home because there's traffic. Five, six, seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have the time. So mm -hmm. that's one thing about Ghana. Always be ready okay. and expect the unexpected. Any, mm -hmm. literally anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can literally, yeah, like I said. Yeah. And I feel like everything has happened. If I tell you the stories, like. Tell I me like one. It's, it's, it's crazy. What, what was one scenario that you were like, wow, this is crazy? I really have to think. It could be well. a gig coming your way. It could be a day in your life. Uh, something that was like, what? What is happening? You know? I feel like um, Ghana in general is real life. I feel like in Europe, you don't live real life. Mm. You live a life that is created in a box for you. You go to work nine to five, the bills are paid at 29, 28. The train comes exactly at the same time. Everything is so like programmed. Really happens. So if the train is five minutes late, everyone starts panicking. Mm -hmm. You know. So here, you live like real life. Real life things um, happen. I remember one day, one day I, I got, I came home from a trip, and my apartment was flooded. It was just literally water everywhere. Wow. Yeah, and I just had to solve it. And I remember, I think it was, even, it was even this week. We had like a whole light off of like almost three days on and off because wow. the lightning company was hacked <laughs> you oh, know? yeah i heard that yeah so a lot of things happen and you just have to manage so wow. the best thing is to come with no expectation you just expect everything is possible mm. but that's also ghana ghana is also a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. literally anything that you want to do you can do it here you just have to have the boss to just go for it mm -hmm. but will you say that yeah. these challenges have somehow moved you or even made you feel like hmm 
maybe I should have just left the country or just left and never come uh, back again. No. Have you got into that stage I, yet? I think I've thought once that, mm -hmm. okay, I'm really, I really want to go home now. And mm -hmm. I actually went home. You did? Yeah. I, okay. I went what home. was the scenario? Um, I think it was just everything together. Mm. It was um, last year and it was my first December in Ghana. So I was just working, working, working. And I'm a, already a workaholic. Yeah. And I literally had shoots back to back, productions back to back. Mm -hmm. I remember at one point I was doing um, a show in, in Coco Beach. Or that's like mm -hmm. a different... The beach side area. Yeah, it's like, I think it's a two hour drive, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to feel, finish at 12. We finished at 4 a.m. Wow. And at 7 a.m. I had to be on set. And it was wow. my production with some of the artists that flew in. Mm -hmm. So these people come from Holland, they flew into where were you. Wow. So, seven so MSP had so I just went, went to it. And that day after we had another event, so mm -hmm. it was just everything back, back to, back. to back. And I feel like I just, I feel like the whole December, I just slept like two hours. Wow. Two or <laughs> so three hours, yeah. And I think my uh -huh. mistake, I thought, okay, December is over and that's it. Mm -hmm. But December is now January. <laughs> so January, I was still working. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? So when it was like February, mm -hmm. March, I was completely overworked wow. and tired. And um, so it was good that I went home and mm -hmm. now I'm just structurizing things differently. Mm -hmm. I have an assistant. She's mm -hmm. absolutely great. I really love her. Wow. I met her. She's very sweet. Assistant. Yeah. Yeah. So I just managing things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, differently right now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, like I said, mm -hmm. like I said, Africa is not for everyone. Not mm -hmm. everyone is going to come and is going to like it. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to absolutely hate it. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Wow. Now, we were speaking behind cameras and you were yeah. telling me about what happens in the modeling industry in Holland. The racism. Can you speak a little bit on, on um, that? I don't think it's just in Holland in general. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. I think it's in Everywhere. the world. The, I feel like the entertainment industry in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot. Yeah, I don't know what you want to know. Yeah, because <laughs> you you said something like you had uh, you had to model, mm -hmm. and then when you went there, the agency were like, "We are looking for someone lighter." Oh, definitely. Yeah. There, so there was a situation that mm -hmm. um, I was not allowed to wear the designer's clothes because I was black. Wow. So basically, came like, "Oh, wow, well, you're very beautiful, but you know what? Mm, looking for something lighter." Wow. Like, okay. Just like that. I just in my face and our backstage director at the time was mm -hmm. actually a black woman so she was like whoa what the hell mm -hmm. but she went to find like some other light-skinned girls and, and the designer was like mm, no no something like uh, and her actual show was just really like the whitest of the whitest model like not wow. even like with a bit of tan nothing just so, white um, we were not allowed to walk her show because we were black wow basically. um yeah wow that yeah. is crazy how did you feel like when that was said um, to you at the time, I didn't know anything. It was just normal for me because I was in it. You, just, you didn't care or you knew that you, you couldn't afford to care? Um, I think I, I, I was also, I was 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And I think at that time, I was just, it was just normal for normal. me. I was just in it. It was just like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Wow. Yeah. That's just okay. crazy. So was a lot of Did things. that influence you to, to do your own production? To um, Definitely. So I started... Omeda at that time, or still actually officially still mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. it was Omeda Models and I started a modeling agency to promote more diversity in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. So at that time, um, the image, I wanted to change the image of black women in the media. Mm -hmm. All you saw was like naked women twerking, yeah. doing that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there was no image of people in the media like me, mm -hmm. you know, like people black women that are doing great things mm -hmm. that are working at mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. so that's actually how my company started and wow that's i feel like sometimes things happen in life but you can always turn it around so for me that was that racism the part and i was like you know what i'm going to do my own thing wow would you say so, that triggered you to move to ghana i feel like there were so many things mm. it was not just one thing and i feel like for me i've always wanted to live in africa okay. ever since i was a little kid and i'm talking about six seven eight years old i wow. was telling my parents i want to go to africa mm. and they're like what's wrong with this child <laughs> <laughs> who do you know there mm -hmm. have you been there they're like no no but uh, i've always been there when then when i was 15 mm. that feeling was starting to get more stronger mm -hmm. at age 18 i knew 100 percent. i was like okay i'm gonna live in africa i don't know when or how i have no idea mm. but i knew that it was gonna happen wow so it was it was a lot of things and i always say your soul um, leads you to where you need to be. Hmm. And you should always like 
follow that voice and like God has a path for everyone and if that's your path that's only for you to understand okay like, makes no one sense. else will get it mm -hmm. and it only makes sense to you mm -hmm. and that's okay too mm -hmm. so for me it was a lot of things and also like I said the European lifestyle just wasn't for me wow it was very depressing for me mm -hmm. it was just you just work every day mm -hmm. nine to five mm -hmm. it's cold everyone's wow. just like you know on their on their let's own. talk about that and just yeah I've heard so many people say that how can it be depressing when you have a job, mm -hmm. you have a car, mm -hmm. you're giving like allowance, crazy amount of allowance, your apartment is Which beautiful. Allowance? Well, mm. some people do have the allowances. <laughs> allowance <laughs> because, hey. yeah, amazing packages. Your salary, when you convert it into African currency, is huge. Definitely. How can you be depressed by doing that? I've heard a lot of people say that, but mm -hmm. I don't understand. Make me understand. Um, I think it's, it's a very difficult topic to talk about, especially mm -hmm. for us immigrants. Um, because that's what I am. I'm basically an immigrant in, in my own country, basically. Wow. Born there, lived there my whole life. But that's how people see you. So they're like, hmm, you can be here, but you're not really one of us. Wow. So all of us, like immigrant people, you know, kids that I grew up with, mm. doesn't matter where. It can be like Turkish people, people from Morocco, Ghanaian, Nigerians, Indian, mm -hmm. like all kinds of different cultures. Um, it's very hard because most of our parents sacrifice so much to get to there, be there so much to be there mm -hmm. so now you're there like oh actually i don't like this yeah i want to leave wow in the past um years like this covid years so many people uh, have committed suicide mm -hmm. that i knew wow you know? yes yes I'm talking back about, in holland yes i'm talking about young black men like in our black community so it's a serious thing that is that is really happening because wow. there's so much pressure. what do you think was causing the depression a lot of things i think pressure mm. um so at one point i felt like okay i did everything that you guys wanted for me mm -hmm. with you guys i'm talking about my parents okay um like okay i have my my best years i went to university i have a good job i have my apartment what else do you guys want for me <laughs> you know? so you, end, you end up marrying someone mm -hmm. that you don't like yeah because of that society mm -hmm. um the pressure that society puts Gives on you, you yeah. and a lot of um yeah, American kids, they feel very guilty to talk mm. about that mm -hmm. because, of course, our parents sacrifice a lot. Mm -hmm. But what we sometimes forget is that there was, it was their job. Mm. Uh, sorry, not their job. It was their responsibility uh, decision. Okay, And yeah. it was their dream. Coming mm -hmm. to Europe was their dream. Mm -hmm. And for you to have your own dream, that's okay too. Okay. And I think that is um, very hard for some people to come to realization. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, okay, I'm also allowed to be my own person. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's a lot of things that happen in Europe that we don't talk about mm -hmm. most of the time also the racism and mm -hmm. for me personally it was in so many places it was in modeling it was in school it was in university it was in finding an internship in finding a job it's just so many things. wow so you talk about that great job with that great money and most of the time I get offered a lower salary wow because, because you're black. black and because I'm a woman Yes, that happens all the time. Wow. Most of the time when you are looking for an, for an intern, they will just be like, oh, sorry, we don't have any places left. Hmm. No, for sure. But they do. There's a vacancy open, you know, so it, it's really a lot of things, a lot of things that happen. Did actually. this yeah. affect you emotionally or mentally in any way, shape or form? I think, yes. At one point, I was just tired. I was literally just tired of that kind of life, of not being happy and mm. also of not being able to um, show my creative side. I've mm -hmm. always been a creative, I've always been a storyteller. I mm -hmm. used to write stories when I was like five, six, seven years old and I woke up and I was like, am I crazy? <laughs> I like make up stories yeah. and start believing into it mm -hmm. myself. I'm definitely a nerd. I, mm -hmm. I would read like so many books. <laughs> and um, so that has always been me, but I always felt like, oh, there was no place for mm -hmm. me to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think it's a lot of things all together. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but you, you made a bold uh, decision to move to the continent. So Let me saying. ask you. <laughs> it is. It is. I remember I traveled myself, and then when there was time for me to move back to Ghana, I, it was not easy. Honestly, I was on a flight. I was like, am I really going back to Ghana? you know the anxiety and everything but you did move back and you are currently here yeah. doing amazing things as i said earlier on i've seen you everywhere you were at the red carpet on a global citizen yeah. you are doing production music video for some you know big huge artist yeah. uh how is the experience in like do, do you expect to see everything or to be here you know in a um, short period of time though yeah it's, it's really crazy but that's 
um, what I always tell people, mm. some, something is meant to you for to be for you, mm. it'll always be yours. No one wow. can come and take that away from you. Mm -hmm. So it was basically like within eight months, I have done maybe like um, four or five productions. Mm -hmm. I've done video clips. I've got my own apartment. Mm -hmm. I've had my own team, mm -hmm. and it was just everything has happened so yeah. fast and. I've been very, very grateful for that, and wow. there's been a lot of challenges, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there was anything that was that bad that I felt like, okay, mm -hmm. I want to leave, I can't do this anymore. I always felt like, okay, I can still mm -hmm. do it, even through like the mental, mental breakdowns, mm -hmm. the hardships, mm -hmm. because Ghana is not a fairy tale life. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I always say, Ghana, every day, didn't want You can literally wake up and you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. That's Ghana for you. Mm -hmm. So I came with no expectations. I never really like move mm -hmm. i came i was like let me just see mm -hmm. let me just go for one month go with the flow see how, mm -hmm. how it's gonna go mm -hmm. and i also think what a lot of people don't know is that um i come from a tough place you know i okay. already grew up uh i didn't grow up with like um amazing mm -hmm. fairy tale life mm -hmm. which like not at all i look like all fancy now <laughs> but that wasn't my life wow. all the time and um also i've already i already had my company I already wanted to take my company to an international level mm -hmm. so i already came with like an established company so i didn't mm -hmm. start from zero okay besides that i was already working in hr mm -hmm. so i had a lot of experience in building teams mm -hmm. i i just um it's easy for me to build a team. It's easy okay. for me to be like, okay, this person is, is good in this. Mm -hmm. This person is good in that. This is uh, these are the skills that we need. Mm -hmm. And so that for me was actually yeah. you know, So it helped in in building a team when yeah, you got so together. Like everything that I went through wow. in life definitely mm -hmm. helped me. And like I think a year uh, before moving here, I had a business coach. Mm -hmm. I had a business coach. She really helped me a lot. Okay. Um, I've learned so much from her. And basically, that's the reason why I've been able to build up my company mm -hmm. into the stage where it is now. Wow. So there's a lot of work that goes mm -hmm. before that. Mm -hmm. And this was before COVID. It was when COVID just started. Mm -hmm. I had my business coach and I was like, you know what? I actually, um, I want to have an international production company. Mm -hmm. I want to work in Africa. I want to do this, this and that. So this is now two years ago. Mm -hmm. But this vision that I have now, maybe I had it like five years ago already. Wow. So people think I just woke up like, oh, one day and it's like, yeah. no, <laughs> wow. I already knew like this wow. is what I wanted to do. Wow. And I already knew that Ghana was going to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I it's going to be say, huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. I always said like, it's the same as when David Doe was like, he's going to make Afrobeat music. And he said, Afrobeat is going to be the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. And look at it now. Yeah. And I was like, okay, at one point, everyone is going to come to Ghana. Okay. Everyone everything is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I always say it's Africa to the world, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And everyone always used to think, mm, mm -hmm. you're a bit crazy for saying that. <laughs> mm, doesn't really make any sense. Mm -hmm. So at that time, Africa was basically a shithole, yeah. you could say. Nobody not would like us, to go, yeah. How people saw it. People yeah. really thought Africa mm -hmm. is a shithole. Mm -hmm. That's how they saw it. Mm -hmm. But I never saw it that way. I always saw it at the place of home. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. listen, this is going to happen. There's going to mm -hmm. come a time. Yeah. Where everyone is gonna be there, mm -hmm. and the time is now. Wow! And so I invested yeah. in being here at the right time. Mm -hmm. So I think that is so much, yeah. so much, so much, so much. How, what did it mean to you when you you were called on the board of the media team at the Global Citizen Festival, yeah. and how did that mean to you in general? Because you came from a place where they didn't even know that thing can exist in Africa, yeah. and Osha was here, and you were the red carpet, and then how how did that mean yeah. to you really? I think that was literally amazing. I think it has been one of the highlights of my career so far. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many other great things to yeah. come, which mm -hmm. I can't talk about right now. Right. But I think it has been absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, the most beautiful part is to see how proud my parents are. And <laughs> my I'm very one, sure, they yeah. <laughs> my number one fan, like wow. my mom, my dad, like wow. they're my number one fan. That's mm -hmm. it's been amazing. But I feel like this concert has mean uh, so much to me right. and it wasn't because oh wow I should mm -hmm. coming to Africa and I feel mm -hmm. like you come from a place where mm -hmm. there was no conversation mm -hmm. of doing big things in Africa we right. were not included mm -hmm. in the conversation mm -hmm. and now to see that there are so many creatives that's getting mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity that are getting a chance to right. showcase that creativity mm -hmm. And also, there were so many people there that I knew. They're like, I was like, oh my god, I know this photographer, mm -hmm. and I know this dance and this stylist. It was like everyone is winning. Mm -hmm. We're all in it together. Wow. And we actually really put Africa on the map. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people are like, okay, we can't do it in Africa. It's not safe. Mm -hmm. It's too dirty. 
But what I also heard a lot is like, hmm, people don't have money to mm -hmm. go to those concerts. Mm -hmm. People don't have this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And we actually proved everyone wrong by right. putting on an amazing show. Mm -hmm. People work on it for weeks, mm -hmm. day and night, mm -hmm. day and night. And, mm -hmm. I'm and that's just, it's free. It's one yeah, of the best shows, but it's free. Exactly. It's crazy. And I feel like has been um, definitely a big change mm -hmm. into like production and mm -hmm. into like entertainment. Mm -hmm. And people now see like, oh wow, hmm, mm -hmm. Kana, what's going on there? <laughs> and I'm definitely sure that this mm -hmm. December is going to explode. It's going to be crazy. You know? It's going to be it's, crazy. It really has been wow. good because what I always wanted is to create uh, spaces for African creatives. Mm -hmm. And I always say that I wanted to tell stories mm -hmm. for Africans, by mm -hmm. Africans, mm -hmm. with Africans. Wow. That was the most important thing for me. I think you, you are now. here. You are there. Yeah. Because I, I was at your exhibition with uh, James. Yes. Am I getting the name right? Yeah. And you had a whole French ambassador and other huge, great names at your exhibition. Yeah. And then I think that is amazing, to be fair. To Thank be you. fair. Thank wow. You. You're doing great on the content, guys. Thank you. I'll, you know, Getting shy. <laughs> <laughs> she's a she's a big deal okay <laughs> wow yeah. do you think every decision you've made so far and everything has been worth it for you up to this day yes it's been worth it and sometimes things don't work out the way you want to mm -hmm. and like i'm an emotional person i always say that cry oh. all the time like <laughs> Is she crying again? Like, yeah, she's crying. Like, that's just me. I'm a very emotional person. So anything that's going on, you can tell it by just looking at me. Wow. So sometimes things don't happen the way you want to. Sometimes yeah. you don't get the gigs, you don't get the jobs, mm -hmm. you don't get the collaborations. But where it's going to lead to, mm -hmm. it's going to be amazing. And yeah. I always say from your, you know, from your biggest devastation comes your biggest victory. Wow. And that's actually what it is. Because wow. in COVID time, I was so... Um, sad and depressed and I made you know wow. it, it took COVID mm -hmm. for me to see like okay this is actually not my life mm. I need to move it wow. so sometimes it's not going to happen how you think it's going to be wow and I think that's the beauty of life as well wow. <laughs> wisdom <laughs> well yeah. people are watching it's like wow this young woman is intelligent beautiful <laughs> Who is the lucky man? Oh, wow. <laughs> Who is the lucky man? Wow. <laughs> well, there's no lucky man at the moment. No, don't tell me that. No. Are you single? I'm single. That's not very true. Much single. Really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do it. <laughs> the men watching, okay? Oh, wow. wow. Are you open today? I'm open today, but uh -huh. I also do find dating just very stressful. Oh, really? Have you tried yeah. dating in Ghana? Oh, oh, <laughs> let's talk about I it. Feel okay. Like dating in Ghana is so stressful. Really? I feel like that should be a whole different episode. Episode. By wow. Yes. Because it's too much dating. to say. It's just crazy. Wow. It's crazy out here. Wow. Yeah, I would definitely wow. say that. Yeah. Guys, I'm still going to leave um, her Instagram okay. there. Okay, <laughs> just go shoot you a shot. Okay. I would but definitely say I've that. spoken with people when they're like. Ghanaian men are the, the, the most faithful, loyal men in the whole of West Africa. Well, if and you find them, send them my way. <laughs> well, I think, I think um, for me, like I'm definitely a creative. I live a certain lifestyle. Um, you have to understand mm. that and you have to fit into that. I work mm -hmm. in entertainment. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people underestimate that that's actually a lot. Yeah. Basically, mm -hmm. um, first of all, I'm always working. Yeah. And work always goes before anything. So yeah. my company, my career mm -hmm. goes before anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and the person that I would date should have to understand that. Yeah. And besides that, entertainment is a world is mm -hmm. a is a weird world to be in if you're not in it. Mm -hmm. I can call you today and tomorrow you're in Paris. Yeah. I don't I don't have time to be like, hey babe. Yeah. You know they said no. I'm on the yeah. plane. I'm out. I'm gone. Yeah. So it's really you have to find someone who really understands all these yeah. things, or in the same industry. Uh. We date to the because you know how it is to date from the industry. That's also it's a crazy. That's yeah. also so that I feel like there's no winning. That's like yeah. there's just yeah. like dating in the industry is also mm -hmm. just. Yeah. So, will you advise people to date in the same industry? I would not. Because I'm scared, guys. I would you never date in the same industry. But, you know, also, I also feel like I'm, I'm very much a sucker for love. You know, wow. like, I really love romance. I yeah. love love, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I always want to be open for that. Mm -hmm. I feel like everything will happen mm -hmm. at the right time in the right place. I feel like every time I talk to my mom, she's like, you have a boyfriend. Who's your boyfriend? Yeah. Like, I'm like, mom, calm down. After this you episode, know? you're going to get a boyfriend for sure. Yeah, I'm like, mom, calm down. It's okay. Like, she's just waiting wow. to date it out, you know, bring yeah. someone to her. 
and my dad is very chill and calm because mm. he also knows me he's like mm -hmm. oh she's gonna be fine she's doing yeah. her own thing my dad has always been very very chill wow but that's nice it's always been like it's smart you can you always told me since mm -hmm. i was a little girl you can do anything that you want wow everything that you want wow. you can do it wow don't be afraid just go for it wow he's like you're very smart just go for it you are very you smart know? He, thank you he always uh, i remember when i first came to ghana like mm -hmm. that first first week first mm -hmm. one and a half week I got very sick. Mm -hmm. I was so scared. I felt like, oh wow. my God, is it malaria? Is it COVID? Wow. Am I going to die? And I called my dad and he's like, just calm down. Mm -hmm. I know you. You're probably wow. overworking. You're probably doing too much. Are you daddy's girl? Because you're saying so many positive things. Your dad is your best friend. Yeah. Really? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if I'm a daddy's girl. I think I'm just both. There's nothing wrong with it, by the way. <laughs> you can all have to Yeah, but I do feel like I can... I can tell my dad everything and i can call mm. him and tell him every day mm. i don't but if i want to i can and i feel like um my dad has been one of the biggest inspirations in my life and really to be the person that i am today is definitely because of my dad and tell us always, one of the stories that really kind of made you felt like wow whatever uh, he's saying is true oh, wow i have stories for days <laughs> really I think, like, at that moment you don't realize you just think like oh it's annoying it's annoying Ugh. But my dad was very very strict he really mm. raised up raised us with the african hand he was so so strict wow so from monday to friday no we'll go outside everyone is just books reading studying reading and so he would teach us a lot of stuff that they didn't taught us in school yet so mm. i would come to school and go, oh i already know this i already know how to count i already know how to write my name mm. like when i was like school starts when you're like four year old in holland right wow so that's like the kindergarten you could say four five six mm -hmm. so i was five six i could already like count to 20 write my own name wow. have my own autograph like all of those mm -hmm. things and i remember before going outside my dad used to drill us he used to be like what is your name what's the phone number what's the address and he would like stand like so straight say hands that. beside you exactly so in, in case you get like mm -hmm. missing or whatever mm -hmm. you know oh, you're yeah, saying this do. straight upbringing helped you uh, I'm not sure if it if it helped. I just think like mm -hmm. it just um, turned out. Mm -hmm. It just it worked for you. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Did it because we have to be honest? It Did it work for me. you? Because um, I know people who hate their parents because of how straight okay. they are. I think I think yes and no. Mm -hmm. Because my dad also he always used to say to me, "You're very very smart." He mm -hmm. always say, "You're my smartest kid. You can mm -hmm. do anything that you want." And every time I was like a little a little bit devastated mm -hmm. or like, "Oh, this that," would be like, "You know what? Try again. Try again." Wow. He's like. My dad calls me like Lorian. He's like, Lorian, Lorian. Like, you have to try, you have to go. I like That's how you pronounce it. You know? Say it again. It is, Lorian. Oh, it's I French. can never say that. <laughs> My dad gave me a French name. Wow. It's, it's French. So he would always just mm -hmm. encourage me. And I think now as an adult, I understand what he did. Wow. And now I still have that mindset. Okay, I can pick myself up and go, go to again. Ghana go to australia mm -hmm. go to whatever mm -hmm. and i'll be fine wow because he put that mindset in my head wow. already so um yeah i think that has definitely been good and when i became like more teen, teen teenager that is when <laughs> it started going left really how because, um well i was definitely a late bloomer mm -hmm. i was definitely late bloomer and i was a huge nerd i was like a super nerd nerd so, yes. that nerd is cool now you know that right i know <laughs> and, and i um i wanted to sing i wanted to dance i was doing theater so all the creative stuff i was doing so i was really creative mm -hmm. but i wasn't really appreciated it was mm. always school 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 so if it had anything to do with school it was okay so i was like oh that's how it works so i was like any school activity i would mm -hmm. do it was like wow. dancing swimming um theater mm -hmm. writing anything mm -hmm. that has the name school on mm -hmm. it i'm there wow at one point my parents were just tired of me like this child <laughs> they were just like they were so fed mm -hmm. up and tired because mm -hmm. i was like oh it's like, i want this i want mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. i was the only one in the house that was really like that mm -hmm. so it's, it's really funny when people are surprised to see mm -hmm. what i'm doing now now yeah the people that really really know yeah. me know when, when you say what do you say way. what do you expect <laughs> yeah they know that i've always been that way yeah so at one point i really wanted to do my own thing i wasn't i wasn't a bad child not mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. i just wanted to do what i wanted and that was creating make stories wow and i remember at one point i was doing a theater show and we mm -hmm. had to do rehearsals and we had to do this and we had to go to theater and it was quite late like maybe mm -hmm. like 10 or 11 and i wasn't wow. allowed to go I just run away. I didn't really <laughs> run away, but I just went. <laughs> basically. Wow. So I, used, I would do things like that mm -hmm. when other kids would just run out and go clubbing or drinking. Mm. I would never do things so like that. So you were focused? I really was. Because of your dad, how yeah, strict he was. I just wanted to. So I was like, wow. why are you mad? Like, I'm not even doing all these mm -hmm. crazy things mm -hmm. that kids mm -hmm. do my age. I just want to 
be in a theater show. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. can I please? So that was a little bit hard. And then at one point, my dad realized that he couldn't stop me anymore. He was mm-hmm. like, okay, this is really what she wants. You know, he told my mom, he's like, okay, you know, it's just at one point I was yeah. like 18, 19, and it still wasn't really going away. Yeah. So at one point, yeah, they were they were mm-hmm. like okay this is just her mm-hmm. it took them a while to really, really? like um support. kind of let you go yeah and to really like support mm-hmm. um which i understand as well and i think like our generation mm-hmm. sometimes we lack the understanding for our parents we mm-hmm. like to understand where they come from mm-hmm. how they grow up mm-hmm. the challenges that were for them mm-hmm. um like when i tell my dad i work for myself he like huh? <laughs> i'm like mom that i work for me like how is that possible mm-hmm, how can mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. it's just weird for them like grow up go to the university get a yeah, degree and get a job exactly okay. so sometimes we also have to take the step back mm-hmm. and understand you know how life is for them mm-hmm. how their vision works okay you know we live in a different time now mm-hmm. we have to like bring them along with us okay definitely and i send all like my videos and mm-hmm. stuff and all my pictures to them wow so all my instagram pictures i send them to my dad wow yeah so really what did yes. he say when he see he it? always says <laughs> <laughs> he has a different one now. He has like a, kind of like a meme kind that mm-hmm. says this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then I know everything is. Well, okay. if he's watching now, what what message do you um, have for you? I would say I don't know. I don't want to get emotional, but my oh. dad also doesn't speak English. <laughs> oh, so you speak sure? Change, I will translate it. Speak Dutch and uh-huh. Portuguese. Portuguese. Ningala. I'll translate. I'll translate the I Portuguese. Just say, I'll just say thank you. You know, thank you for always encouraging. No, you can me. speak in Portuguese. Oh, we, ah, my Portuguese is not so great. Oh, really? Ah. Oh. <laughs> So what can you speak? I will just do it in English now because okay, we're, in, sure. we're in English. So let me just say in English. So, mm-hmm. um, I think to my parents, I would just say thank you, you know, wow. for always um, supporting me mm-hmm. and um, understanding, even mm-hmm. though sometimes it wasn't, it wasn't easy for wow. them. Especially me leaving, you mm-hmm. know, your baby girl is leaving and just going to another continent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just, wow. I have a lot more to say, but I don't want to get emotional. So don't do, okay. I yeah. think that's, that's what I'm going wow. to say right so, now. So people yeah. are watching you. I think your friends are watching. I can see the future <laughs> and they're like i would love to to follow her full step or even do my own research and move to the continent mm-hmm. but you've been here what would you say you wish you knew before you moved to ghana and what people should look out or prepare for when they they want to move to ghana um, definitely ghana is expensive mm. that is africa is expensive y'all <laughs> uh, africa is you see so how crazy cool. it is before it's like africa is not a place no. to go it's like now people come in they realize they can't afford africa to live here <laughs> That is the first thing. Wow. Like, make sure you have your money, make sure you have your savings, mm-hmm. make sure you have a remote job. Wow. Like, I am um, still till now have a remote job in HR from a Dutch company. Really? Because why not? Mm-hmm. You know, so make sure you have your things structured mm-hmm. and make sure you come. Um, don't just move right away, just come for a month and see. Okay. And then you can go back and, you know, work and save mm-hmm. another six months and then come for two months. And okay. Months. You know, see and like and soft drive. landing, basically. Exactly. Don't like dive in and mm-hmm. think it's gonna be a fairy tale because it's not. Mm. It's really not. I always say, like, gonna make you cry. Yes. Gonna, <laughs> gonna you. gonna make you cry more than your boyfriend would. <laughs> <laughs> I you know. I always say, no, you. Ah, this gonna. Hmm, wow. If you're not tall, they will stress you. Just run away. Mm-hmm. And you will just never come back. Mm. But I think, like we as diaspora, because we're so used to the system working, mm-hmm. we're so used to everything being set up for us. Mm-hmm. We can't handle it, or mm. we just give up too soon. Be like, no, it's too much. I leave. We don't actually. I feel like Africans are the only people. I don't want to stay in that country and work it out. Mm-hmm. We always want to. Why do you think that is? It's definitely because because of the um, because of the history. Mm-hmm. That definitely for sure we have a very very tough history, mm-hmm. and it's very hard for Africans to believe that Africa mm-hmm. is a good place. Mm-hmm. And and because it's also easy, you know, why would you go and make your life difficult? Who does that? Exactly. No one wants to do that. So I feel like when you're here and now the electricity is not working, the the streets are flooding, mm-hmm. like this is happening, that's even like, oh, let me mm-hmm. just leave. Yeah. But I feel like if we all just, all the aspirants just come back and make it work, we're going to see how Africa is going to change in wow. one year, two years, three years. It's already so different right now. Mm-hmm. We have so many investors coming in, so many celebrities, big stars coming and investing, living here. I feel like if we can all do that together, why not? Yeah. Do you think it's possible to make it in Ghana, by the way? Yeah. It is possible. Definitely. Why not? But why do you why think your eyes are possible? open to all these opportunities? You know, um, why do you think that is though? Why do you think that it's, it's coming uh, to me? Because like you see, like if I do this, it's going to succeed in two years. 
I can do this, I can do that. But the Ghanaians living in the country is like, I don't think I can make it in Ghana. I have to go to UK, yeah. US, and other places yeah. like that. Also, it comes, it comes from um, the history. Mm. Like, as so, so many times, we as Africans, we don't trust ourselves. Mm. We don't trust ourselves that we can actually do good. We don't trust ourselves that we can actually build something. Mm -hmm. We will believe in another man's dream. We will believe in the African... No, we will believe in the American dream mm -hmm. before we will believe in, in the African, African dream. dream or we don't want to build what is the African dream? dream? We're still di discovering that. Really? We're definitely still discovering mm -hmm. that. I think I'm definitely part of that because for me, what I'm doing right now, what I'm very happy and proud of to do is to create the bridges that I'm mm -hmm. creating right now. Mm -hmm. So my team is always a blend of people from the diaspora and mm -hmm. people here. Mm -hmm. Like I always, I wanted to come and work with local people Okay. because I feel like it makes no sense mm -hmm. for us people from the diaspora to come and live in our own, um, you know, bubble. little box, mm -hmm. in our own bubble, only with ourselves. No. So my team that I work with, my video guy, uh, my stylist, my dancers, um, my scout, my assistant, they're all local people. Okay. And I love that. I've learned mm -hmm. so much from them. There's so much talent here on the continent. Wow. And then my clients that come in, they also bring their people and we make a blend. Wow. And that's how you grow. Wow. It's not just doing things by yourself. That's not going to make any difference at all. Wow. I so, like that. Yeah, I think I'm... I'm I would say I'm a part of the Africa dream. You are. You are. Yeah. you are. What would you say has been the greatest lesson Ghana or moving to Africa has taught you? Um, I think being, uh, just being humble in humble. general. Humble. Okay. Um, I feel like in Europe, we complain a lot mm. about anything. We complain all the time. Our whole existence mm -hmm. sometimes is based, based on complaining. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't really see the beauty of life. And I feel like the biggest lesson for me is like have more compassion mm -hmm. uh, for other people. When like in Europe, you live more a life of yourself. You do your own thing. You pay your own bills. Everyone is in his and own. Yeah. Don't really like care, but like uh, someone asked me this question before, mm -hmm. and I answered that, and they asked me for an example, and I was like, okay. For example, there's this lady that sells fruit at, at the side of my uh, like like my street, my neighborhood. Okay. And if I'm at the supermarket and I see like tomatoes, I'm like, oh, let me not buy it. Let me just go home and buy it from, from her. her. Okay. Because if I don't buy it, how would she live? Yeah. What is she going to eat? Yeah. Like in Europe, you would never even think about that. Yeah. But I just think, okay, let me like pass by mm -hmm. my local coconut guy. Let me mm -hmm. just sit there. Wow. I'll be literally in a zoo. Yeah. And I'll go all the way back home. Just to buy to that. Eat his coconut because, wow. you know, that's, that's my person. That's my community. Wow. And then I have all my local people mm -hmm. where I make sure like every week I pass by, I have mm -hmm. my local bakery, mm -hmm. make the best bread and I always come there, have a chat mm -hmm. and buy from there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it has given me more compassion, you know, with, with is that how you say it? Yeah, <laughs> you know? compassion. With, yeah. with like other yeah, human beings and I think that's that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's what I what I love. And besides that, be patient. <laughs> Patience, Ghana, yes. Ooh, wow, Ghana you need it, you. it comes in handy. Mm -hmm. You, have you humbled, I had a humbled experience uh, or so many ways. <laughs> Let's hear one. <laughs> so many ways from like so many ways. I remember one time I got, I came home and mm -hmm. the whole apartment was just flooded. Wow. It was just like a leak somewhere. It was just water. Was it like just No, not oh, okay. just like like still on my ankles. Wow. But still I was like, whoa. And um so many things. Wow. So many things. You just like things just happen or there's like light off, there's mm -hmm. no electricity and then you really start to think like wow. I had electricity every day and I didn't appreciate, you appreciate it. You appreciate it. <laughs> you know, like, wow, wow, look at me now. Wow. You know, so there's things like that that will happen. And I feel like Ghana is living real life. It's mm. living real life. And I've met so many amazing people mm -hmm. uh, in this, you know, year and a half that I've been there. Mm -hmm. that has been life changing. So mm -hmm. it's it's something that I'll always carry with me. Wow. So even like later when I'm older, I'll be like, oh my God, I'm <laughs> nice in Ghana. <laughs> It will always be, mm -hmm. you know, it's an experience that no one can take away from mm -hmm. me, so I really love that. Mm -hmm. So based on what you've experienced and everything, the ups and downs, would you still advise your friends to move? Uh, I think it depends. It depends? I think I would, n I would not um, advise someone to move anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Africa is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Ghana is not for everyone. I mm -hmm. know Ghanaians have absolutely hate it. Wow. They absolutely hate mm -hmm. Ghana. Every Ghanaian hates Ghana. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's really true. So, it just depends, you okay. know, like, would I advise someone to 
move to Europe. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I also wouldn't. Okay. But it depends. Okay. So Europe is not for everyone, mm. but Africa is also not for everyone. It wow. literally depends on your person and what you want. Mm -hmm. For me, my business is here, the entertainment business is here. Mm -hmm. I, at one point I was like, okay, I want to do video clips. And almost all the big video clips that I was watching were being shot in Ghana and Nigeria. Mm. So my business coach was like, okay, why are you still here? Yeah. Your business is there, why are you mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's also a big factor, is your business here? Can you bring your business here? Okay. If you just want to work remotely and just live here and chill, that's also cool. Yeah. So it's everyone's mm -hmm. personal... Maybe different. Yeah, okay. it's a personal situation. I mean, situation. speaking of business, you've seen some businesses fail. You've had yeah. friends who move into the country or even yeah. people You've seen distance where they came to the country. They had mm -hmm. this morale. It's like, I'm going to make it on a continent. Yeah. And then they give up and leave, right? Because yeah. the business does not succeed. Mm -hmm. And you've also seen people who are succeeding and everything. Exactly. Based on all these experiences and the things you've seen, what would you say has been the three best businesses that people have done here on the continent and have succeeded? And then if people are watching right now, they can probably take some few tapes and then come do it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Or maybe two. Best business, yeah. It's that's a difficult question because mm -hmm. I don't think that is such a thing as the best business. Mm -hmm. It's just about the business mind. Okay. And in business, I always tell people um, follow the money. So oh. for me, the money is in Europe and America, mm -hmm. and I make sure to bring the money here. So okay. I bring my clients here to Ghana. Mm. That's my core business. That's the niche that I mean. Okay. So the the most important thing is find your own niche, mm -hmm. and when you find that, you'll be good because. It can, you can have a great business mm -hmm. and it's not working. Yeah. You, know, you won't believe how many people came to me that exactly. doing the same thing or tried to do the, to same, do the same thing. But they failed? And they came to me like, no, it's not going to work. You cannot do this, you cannot do I'm like, okay, cool. It's mm -hmm. your experience. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Exactly. So everyone is different. So you can have a great business, but maybe you're not that good of a business mm -hmm. woman or not that good of a business man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. it's definitely the pants for me what i'm doing is working for me because i'm so passionate mm -hmm. and i absolutely love it mm -hmm. i love working in entertainment i mm -hmm. love story writing i love being a creator um, i want to move forward with films and series mm -hmm. and that's what let's I talk about love. some projects yeah. and then if people want to work with you yeah. how they can get through to you and, yeah. and stuff like that um well, they'll get, they can get through me to uh to my instagram mm -hmm. to my website to my email i think gonna be all listed, on the, listed below yeah somewhere. in the description somewhere <laughs> exactly. yeah and they can get to you and then you're willing to collaborate as well right definitely i'm definitely open for collaboration so mm -hmm. for me i built my whole business onto collaboration okay that's how i always want i mm -hmm. feel like that's the best way mm -hmm. to bring a vision to life mm -hmm. and when i'm working with someone i never say like okay this is what i want this is what you want mm -hmm. if something stops i'll be like listen we're not doing this it looks absolutely terrible yeah you know which is this week i was having a conversation with a great filmmaker that mm -hmm. wanted to do a screening mm -hmm. but he ran out of time because you know his schedule wasn't speaking to me. yeah like, okay um, let's just do this let's i'm like hmm, that's not what you want mm -hmm. yeah i'm like let's just push it mm -hmm. to next year so mm -hmm. it'll be something that you really want okay and it'll be the vision that we spoke about mm -hmm. that is important that's how you will how you will succeed in business mm -hmm. it's not about taking all the projects on mm -hmm. and just doing whatever just because Makes the money sense. is there makes sense that's how i feel it and uh, yeah i'm open definitely open for collaboration mm -hmm. with different brands with artists mm -hmm. i feel like i do so many things right yeah. now yeah i have created my first event my first art exhibition which was absolutely great mm -hmm. so i'm also a curator now guys yeah <laughs> i do creative direction i write i produce like it's just you have a wonderful portfolio I have, like, poetry i've written a whole poetry book actually like, really is it yeah. out is it ready I, it's not out i don't really oh. know what to do with it it's called confessions of an african heart really and i wrote it in my first trip here in ghana so like this is not last year mm -hmm, almost mm -hmm. one and a half years i wrote it i came back finished it and it's just finished but wow but you're not there. publishing it i don't really know what to do with it it's just Damn. some people have read it and I've can i get to read it too oh, <laughs> I'm, not really sure. I'm not really sure she's gonna give it to me don't worry <laughs> i just i just love to be uh, mm -hmm. creative and i think mm -hmm. that's important sometimes to yeah, just have the space yeah. to um, mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. that's just, that's just really do you think great. africa is the future definitely and that's always been it's wow. always been. There was absolutely not any time in the world where Africa was in the future. Really? It's always been. Yes, if you even look at anything that's happening in the entertainment business, mm. 
even if you look at like the bodies like the bbl the big lips that that comes from us. african yeah they, you know, and why do you think that us, is now so africa is so cool <laughs> but later on you know years ago it's like you oh, you don't want to associate like, with I, this i grew up in a time where you were actually bullied mm -hmm. when you were african they mm -hmm. were bullying you or oh, some of the things they say to you before. They'll tell us we're dirty, mm. we smell like fish, wow. they'll make fun of my hair. And pe like, like, light skinned so people or white people make fun of your, your uh, own kind even of... Even black people, like oh, really? was, most of the time the Caribbean people um, where I grew up with, like it was just like mm -hmm. when you... Actually at the time a lot of people would just lie and say like they're from the Caribbean or they're from that because it was so embarrassing to be African at that time. Mm. It was crazy but at, still at that time... Africa was still influencing a lot of things, especially if we look at American culture right mm -hmm. now. It's basically built on on um, African yeah, on culture. African, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at like clothes, mm -hmm. um, food, like all the wigs that people mm -hmm. are doing now, mm -hmm. big earrings, mm -hmm. like the long, colorful nails, sneakers, street style. Mm -hmm. I can just keep going on and on and on. Wow! You know? Like I just feel like I see how proud been, you are. Yeah. yeah I feel what are you seeing in Ghana that the ordinary Ghanaian is not seeing? Um, I think it's very hard when you live in a place every single day. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. And we also have to understand, obviously, I come from a place of privilege. Mm -hmm. I do understand that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had the opportunity to study. I've had the opportunity <clears throat> to start my own business. Mm -hmm. And we have a different currency. When you're coming with dollars and with euros, mm -hmm. you have a huge advantage. Yes, people yes. here, they don't have that. Yes. Some people here are making 800 CDs a month. A month. What are you going that to is do my floor tank for three days. <laughs> that is crazy. I'll cut it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What are you going to do with that? Yeah, that it's crazy. crazy. It is crazy. And sometimes you feel so ashamed of yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my god, how if yeah. I just do my hair, my mm -hmm. nails, and I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. I reached that budget. So you, you think Af so Af it's hard. Africa need the diaspora to to definitely, grow? Definitely, mm definitely. -hmm. And I feel like what I'm doing right now, <clears throat> bringing budgets in. Mm -hmm. Um, working with local teams, mm -hmm. I feel like that is you know a step mm -hmm. in the right direction because most of the time people are willing, okay. but they don't always get the opportunity. I've had Ghanaians who work with diasporans, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Listen, I love to work with them, creative minded, but mm -hmm. sometimes they cut off like I know too much mm -hmm. than you, and you listen to me now." <clears throat> what do understand. you think, or how do you think the diasporans can work with the Ghanaians yeah. living on the continent? So we don't have to always go to yeah. bump head all the time. That's actually a great question. And I think that I struggled with that as well because mm -hmm. we come from two different worlds. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's hard for the local people. Mm -hmm. And it's also hard for us diasporans because sometimes we come here with the expectation, oh, we're also... Like, for me, I'm from Angola, so I know yeah. who I am. I yeah. know that I'm African. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come, like black Americans, mm -hmm. um, they don't always know their heritage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, we as diasporans, we expect, oh, Ghanaians to just accept us. Yes. So we're here now. Mm -hmm. We want to be African today as mm -hmm. well. Oh, like, come and accept us. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't work that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. You have to give them space and time mm -hmm. to get used to us as mm -hmm. well. Because mm -hmm. for them, they've been living here for That's years. True. And now we are coming and they're like, whoa, what's yeah. happening? What's happening? You cannot expect them to yeah. trust us right yeah. away. And I think for us as diasporans, it's finding that middle ground like see what you can learn mm -hmm. ask people what what are mm -hmm. um their ideas for mm -hmm. me this whole year i've learned so much and the most things i've learned is to work with different wow. creatives wow. Um, because they do things in a way that we can never do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we also do things in a way that they can never do that is true so there's no mm -hmm. better or less or no one is winning and no one is nothing, listening wow. nothing um, wow. nothing have you have you come across the <laughs> obroni thing have someone um, called you obroni before no. <laughs> no, that is good. Uh, I'm not light skinned, so yeah. they call me. But then you're <laughs> asking, or some are like, oh, you're not from here. Uh, you say, funny, you've never had that. The funny thing is, most of the time people think um, I am black American. Okay. Just because I'm tall. Okay. Or they think hmm, maybe she is Ghanaian, or maybe like, it could be like that my dad is Ghanaian, or okay. my mom. It could be anything in their eyes. And Makes most of sense. the time I just expect, um, I just, no, pretend mm -hmm. that I. Um, understand the language you should i think <laughs> it's good yeah but i have i don't really think i've had bad experiences mm -hmm. and that also comes with us being open to giving people time so mm -hmm. when people were like oh where are you from i just explained to them oh, i'm from here from mm -hmm. there oh my god you're from angola okay. sometimes people say where is that mm -hmm. you know we just have to mm -hmm. both of us we have to meet each other halfway mm -hmm. you know and a lot of times diasporas get very upset mm -hmm. and they leave 
but we also have to put our um, brains in their shoes mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. we're coming here it's to true. their countries, not mm -hmm. the other way around. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think, oh, we're coming home, year of return, we're all here now. But they didn't get the memo. Yeah. They're like, what's happening? <laughs> like, who are you guys? So we have to, you know, take a wow. break sometimes and just wow. be like, okay. Wow. You share so much wisdom. Really? If you have a last message for the people watching, what would that message be? Uh, wow, that's a difficult question because I feel like I have so much to say. So much? Sure, yeah. give it to them. <clears throat> um I will think like don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Just live your live your best life, mm -hmm. live your true. You know, life is very short. Um don't live your life um, doing what someone else wants, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be like your parents, your family members, society. You're just there to take a, a step. And especially when you're from the diaspora with the privilege that we have, mm. just come and just see for yourself. Don't believe the media. Don't believe the hype. Just come mm -hmm. and just see. Wow. See how it's like. It might mm. be for you and it might be not. What about? But, mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid. Guys, afraid. don't be afraid. And people move back, mind you. And they exactly, left. Every day. People and then move back every day. Some came and yeah. left. And that's okay too. That's okay. Too. I feel like but I heard people, people were spending too much. Oh, they no. thought the, hmm. the dollars. Wow. <laughs> hmm. That one dollar is, is 10 cities. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I see so much money. And they end up spending crazy. Yeah. And they realize yeah. that, listen, it's not cheaper. Ghana is and they leave. Yeah. Very expensive. But it also depends on what kind of lifestyle you live. You're living. That's definitely a thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've had an amazing conversation. I think yeah. we have so much to talk about. Yeah. But then time is, 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 the sun is going down. It's, it's so okay. we will do part two. Really? Yeah. Should oh, we do part God. two? I'm actually scared. <laughs> because now I feel like you were asking me about the dating. <laughs> dating. Because oh. you said we did a whole episode for the dating. <laughs> so we can dive into the Ghanaian men and dating a Ghanaian man. I'm I knew you dated about. a Ghanaian man. How do you know that? Do you I know, know everything. That? That's not true. I'm everywhere. <laughs> That's not true. You've not dated a Ghanaian. That's not true. You've not dated. You've not. <laughs> <laughs> this this has been an amazing conversation so far. Since you don't yeah. want to say, it. did you? I will see. Okay, the so the saying we'll see. that okay. We'll see. By the way, Ghanaian are the most faithful, loyal men in the whole of West Africa. And if you're watching this, <laughs> fly to Ghana. <laughs> Immediately, well, I would say don't mm. come for men, come for business. Yeah, come people, for yourself, you know, people come for mar married and stuff like that. People come to get married. People, I think it, it doesn't have to be always business. Sometimes people follow their heart. Some mm -hmm. people are like they met someone in the UK That's or possible. the US and they want yeah, to come. I, like you can find I think there's nothing wrong with it, but then when it becomes too much, it's when yeah, it's like you can definitely find love everywhere. Mm -hmm. Also in Ghana, <laughs> will you advise you your friends to everywhere. leave wherever they are to Ghana because they found love? Will you advise someone to do that? Why not? Like, why not? Why if not? If you're, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. It can be anything. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been amazing. We had a wonderful conversation. If you did enjoy the video, please and please like the video. Comment down below what you liked about the video. Share to friends and family. Her information is going to be on the screen and in the description. Exactly. The works that she has done, everything is going to be on the screen. And I'm also starting my own YouTube channel. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Finally. I think by the time this video is going to be out, mm -hmm. my YouTube channel is also going to be up. You do uh, have a great so, personality. I think you're going oh, to do well you. on YouTube. So I think my question is just mm -hmm. put like comments below mm -hmm. like what you want me to talk about yeah what kind of topics are you mm -hmm. interested in and dating in gala <laughs> <laughs> let's just see and then don't forget to follow what would be their youtube channel name um i don't know yet so i wanted to be really? sure but i don't know but okay. you know what let's do this so we can put it down yeah here. guys okay, comment so down how how yeah. you should name a youtube channel yeah. and uh, i think your first video should be a collab with me i think that would be great that would be good that, right let's, let's, let's do q and a Oh, Lord, we bring I'm out some so cards and then really so, so that people get to know who you are uh -huh. and then then everything else follow okay. and then based on the Q&A we can have uh, video ideas on what they want to see. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, see. Let's wow. See. So guys, I'll leave everything in the description. Please go check her out. She's amazing, doing great things on the continent. And Charlie, if you are watching this, just move back. Ghana is amazing and it's the future. So without further ado, peace out and bye bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.